If you're like me, you have a love-hate relationship with Lightroom. Uh, it does a lot of the things that I need it to do that nothing else can, and at the same time, it fails massively on certain things. So today we're going to talk about editing you know, f uh, a lot of photos, things like corporate events, sports, wedding photography, where you just have a ton of photos you need, you need to get through them quickly, apply presets to a lot of things. Uh, this is the video for you. So um, shout out to Callum Pinkney on uh, our uh, wedding photography on Reddit. Um, for giving this idea and kind of giving me the idea, hey, I don't think everybody knows this because he mentioned this is how he does it. I, it's also the way that I do it. And there's a lot of other people out there that don't know this little trick. So the recent Lightroom update uh, as of June of 2016 uh, really messed up my workflow because before, um, well, actually, let's scratch that. We're going to go right into how I do this and then we'll talk about all the specifics later for all the nerd geeks like me. Anyway, so um, as you can see, just watch the delay here. So I'm going to hit my keyboard. One, two, one, two. It's like almost a two or three second delay flipping through these raw images um, from this event. And it's like, this is, you know, I need to edit hundreds of photos very quickly and this is gonna add up. I mean, you can imagine how many seconds I'm gonna lose in my life if I was having to deal with this in real time. So the first thing you need to do is you need to create what's called a smart preview. You can see over here in the top right, I've got an original photo plus the smart preview. So how you do that, you actually can't do this in the develop module. You have to go over to library, you select all of the files, control A, um, which whatever you're looking at, you go to library and you can actually um, create the smart previews here. And let me see if I can find it. Um, because, oh yeah, previews, build uh, smart previews, right? So the next thing that you need to do is you need to go and find um, the event, right? And this was a Houston event. And I'm going to actually go in here and change just the file structure. Put an X right there. That's This is how I do it. You do it however you want, but this is how I've been doing it forever, even when I use Premiere for video, making things go offline. So that that's what I do. Now, if, if you notice, you go back to Lightroom, and you have this little marker here. It says you have a smart preview. The original file is gone. So now, if you guys want to watch, look at how quickly I'm able to skip through the files. And if I want to come here under the develop module and bring the highlights down, do whatever, I've noticed almost no change. Now when you do zoom in, right, you're not going to get a, like a full zoom in. It's only going to let, let you zoom in. You can zoom in more, but you're just, you're not going to see the quality there because these are small files. But as far as like editing these things and getting the color right and doing all that kind of stuff, it's as simple as that. So I hope that that's helpful. Now, don't forget to swap back out the files. So when, when you're done, you go back in here and you change that, right? And sometimes it'll do it for you. Like right now, it already picked that up. It's pretty good. Sometimes you'll have to go here and say, uh, show an explorer and it will try to find the file and you have to like match it up. But if I just change the folder name like that, that's the easiest way to do it. A lot of people will disconnect the drive, you know, and I don't, I think that's unnecessary. Um, so, you know, just now we're getting in, into more of the technical. What I used to do is I have all of these um, SSD drives. Like I just got a new SSD drive that I have this uh, video project on here. And I had the SSD drive for the actual raw files. I had a separate SSD with the catalogs. And I had a, yet another SSD drive, which has the um, uh, Windows and the actual operating system on. And then I would have these, these backups. I have a, a two four terabyte backups. Um, this is just what I have on my computer, and I have separate stuff as well. But these are a redundancy, right? And of course, Dropbox and other things as well. Um, so long story short, you know, Lightroom used to, to operate pretty good because, you know, when, you, when, when you're pulling the raw image off of that SSD, you can skip around these things pretty quick. But what I noticed, as you can see, I'm on the original photo and this thing is just slow. So what, what I've noticed is that's not the case anymore. I've also noticed some RAM issues here. So if you look right here, Lightroom never used to take up this much RAM. I'm using 11 gigabytes of RAM, or uh, let's see, Lightroom's using 6.8, which is a lot for me just sitting here doing nothing basically. And I, at one point, I was noticing I was getting 16, 17 gig uh, usage just sitting here doing nothing. So um, I've also noticed there's kind of a memory leak there. So watch out for that. If you're getting slowdowns, you know, just reset your computer, reset uh, Lightroom. 
So anyway, um, yeah, just remember to swap them back out. Um, not that I've ever delivered um, one megabyte uh, smart preview images because it won't warn you when when you go to export um, and you go to print and you export this thing. It's not going to tell you that you're going to get a one megabyte image that's like I don't know 900 pixels on the long edge or whatever. So. Make sure that you uh, change those out. Anyway, uh, this is meant to be just a really quick video uh, showing you how to do that. Um, it's awesome for wedding photography, man. I mean, if you just need to get through and do bulk edits and all that kind of stuff. The frustration, the frustration with Lightroom, the frustration with Lightroom really it, for me is the fact that, you know, it does do presets so well. It manages large amounts of photos. It does bulk exports. It categorizes things so well, but it's so sluggish. And I'm running, just so you guys know, I'm running a 980 Ti, a six gigabyte, uh, you know, EVGA uh, uh, freaking graphics card. I'm running an i7 that's like water cooled <clears throat> with a radiator. I have 32 gigs of RAM. You know, I'm running everything on SSDs. It should not be operating this way. And it's actually getting a little bit better now, but still there's just a huge delay. I don't know if you can hear my mouse clicks. So anyway, guys, I hope that was helpful. Um, you guys take it easy.